on today's installment of Big Al's Garage, we're now taking a cruise in the Corvair. <laughs> Right now we're sitting at the site of my future in-laws. No, well, they are my in-laws, not my future in-laws. My in-laws future house here on Lake Lyman. Figured it was a nice day. Let's get the car out and give her a little exercise. Away we go. Corvair is an excellent car for learning stick shift in. It's got a very forgiving clutch. Oh boy, the road here is covered with mud and seriously regretting driving this way. Not only does it have a very forgiving clutch, it has a very torquey air-cooled flat six engine in the back. So it's very easy to learn on. Much easier than a modern four-cylinder, if you ask me. Well, we're behind an SUV right now. Corvair has something of an undeserved reputation for being a dangerous car that's due in no small part to Ralph Nader's book, Unsafe at Any Speed, The Designed in Dangers of the American Automobile. In 1972, NHTSA, I don't ask me what those letters stand for, but the National Highway Safety Agency commissioned a study by Texas A&M University that found the Corvair didn't handle any worse and wasn't any more dangerous than cars of the time period. Now compared to modern cars, yeah, the Corvair is a death trap, but a lot of Ralph Nader's accusations were grossly exaggerated. And a lot of his accusations were also leveled at the earlier model cars, the 60 to 64 models and it should be noted that while those models did have what's called swing axle suspension that would allow a wheel to tuck under under a tight turn and lever the car upward the 64 models had a camber compensator that would keep that from happening this is a 65 model the model 65 to 69 had vastly improved rear suspension it was the fully independent rear suspension taken off of the Corvette. The only difference between the Corvair and the Corvette is the Vette had leaf springs. This has coils. So you actually have one of the best handling cars of the time period. Even though that is certainly not the Corvair's reputation. Corvair is a car that I've dreamed of owning since my senior year of high school. Why a, uh, you know, when all my uh, friends were lusting over, you know, the Integra Type R and Mod and Outdoor Civics, I wanted one of these. Part of the reason for that is my father, who was very into these cars back in the 70s, he owned quite a few of them at one point. That was, of course, back when you could pick them up for next to nothing because people were just scared to death of them because of Ralph Nader's book. And he would tell me about, you know, how fun his fun stories about how well they handled. And I looked at pictures of them. That made me want one. They're one of the few reasonably priced cars of the 1960s. So I wanted one all throughout college, all throughout starting a career. Other responsibilities back in and then in 2019 I looked at my bank account and realized hey I can afford this and started looking seriously one popped up for sale an hour or so away in Anderson South Carolina I went I looked at the car funny story my daughter who was two years old at the time left her shoe in it I'm on my way 
way back to Lyman. I'm about to call up the uh, gentleman, tell him I'll take it. He calls me and says, uh, I found a shoe in the back of my car, and I don't think it belongs to me. It doesn't fit. The guy I bought it from has quite a dry sense of humor. Great guy. Breaks, huh? Now, let's do a pull. I should mention when we did that, we were in Mexico, not South Carolina. I know I shouldn't be doing that on public roads, but. Cop didn't see it, I didn't do it. <laughs>
much more visceral experience than a modern car. I can avoid a ticket by using hand signals. 